Direct character buffs in Genshin, that's something that doesn't really happen very often. Pretty much not at all, really. Yeah, we have had characters that improved significantly far more than anyone would have expected any direct buffs to ever do. And that is thanks to things like new characters, weapons, or artifact sets. So here are five of the characters that I think have improved the most from where they started. Kicking this off with Noelle. Now, I will say that Noelle was never truly a bad character. She was always just either misunderstood or really undervalued. With the version 1.0 Klee banner, having Noelle on it, that meant a lot of people got at least a handful of Noelle cons trying to get Klee. Unfortunately, or fortunately for a lot of people, that means they didn't get C6. And without C6, Noelle truly is not a very good unit. However, this list is not here to talk about improvements from C0 to C6 or anything like that. No, 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 no. This is meant to talk about gaining new items and new teammates. And honestly, Noelle is one of the better examples of that. You see, the biggest blessing for Noelle was technically being replaced. Most would likely be very saddened to hear that their main or favorite character was getting essentially replaced by a newer character that is doing the exact same thing as them with the same element with the same weapon. But for Noelle, it couldn't have been a bigger blessing in disguise. She went from having no real artifacts set to call her own other than Gladiator, which was never really a perfect fit due to the attack scaling two set and using a R5 white blind as one of her best in slot weapons to having a five star weapon that suits her perfectly and the husk artifact set both of which being absolutely massive upgrades over what she was using before that. And not only that, Ito's release saw the release of Goro alongside him. Now, it is entirely possible that these things would have existed without Ito, but I seriously doubt it because they're usually released alongside five stars to help the hype for them. Then a little bit further down the line, we got Yunjin, yet another really good support for Noelle and an excellent alternative to Bennett. Fast forward once again even further, and then we get Farina, an excellent support for Noelle. And really, I mean, Farina is an excellent support for anybody, but Noelle is a DPS that actually heals her team by DPSing. So the synergy between her and Farina are undeniable. You really couldn't ask for a better pairing. However, it would seem that Noelle's position on the average tier list, no matter whose tiers list it is that you look at, hasn't really changed that much. She always hovers around like maybe like the C to B or even possibly A range, depending on who's making the tier list. And again, she's a four star DPS. She has an essentially a direct replacement with Ito, so she's constantly undervalued and overlooked. Oh, and there is one more character that impacted Noelle going up, and that's because he's the next character on the list, Albedo. Now here's the thing, Albedo has always had his diehard fans, just as every character does. But despite how good they thought Albedo was for the longest time, because everyone really overvalues their favorite characters, you know, you all do it. Albedo was in a really tough spot. He had a niche use with Hu Tao as an EM buffer, but even then, that's not exactly the best state to just be worth 125 EM buff when you use your burst. And even then, his burst takes so long to cast that it becomes debatable whether it's even worth it. And most people didn't know him in the first place. So who's actually going to use that team? He was, without a doubt, one of the worst limited five stars in the entire game, with the only real strong competition being Klee at the time. The man had no real weapons that suited his play style, with most of them offering like energy recharge and stuff, and his burst just not really being worth casting in the average team. And he also had no artifact set that really made sense. But then in version 2.3, we got what is undoubtedly the best event weapon we've ever gotten, the Cinnabar Spindle, which is pretty much just as good as a limited five star weapon for Albedo. This was a significant boost to his damage, over the usual Harbinger of Dawn or something like the Primordial Jade Cutter stat stick. And then, of course, with it being 2.3, that also saw the release of Ito, meaning that he also got the benefit from the Husk artifact set. Albedo's damage truly went up a staggering amount, and the only reason why I would say he's more improved than Noel is because Noel was always pretty good, where Albedo, in my opinion, was really one of the worst characters you could have wished for. Now, that position may not have changed depending on what teams you like to play, but he is significantly better than he used to be. Now we move on to a character with an almost similar story to Noel, and that being Xiao. Now, he didn't get a character that replaced him that he benefited from. However, Xiao's position as Hoyo versus Golden Boy is almost undeniable at this point. Xiao just keeps getting artifacts set after artifact set after artifact set with dedicated supports being made for him repeatedly, and they've had ample opportunities to just make a new character that plays like Xiao, but no, 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 no. They seem hellbent on making Xiao as best as he can be without just outright buffing his kit. Does it make sense? Yeah, a little. He's pretty significant in the story and he's had a lot of memorable cutscenes and stuff, Xiao seems very integral to the identity of Genshin Impact, so why not keep making him better? The entire reason why I say he's very similar to Noel is because not only is he an old character that keeps getting better seemingly by things that were maybe meant for other characters, you know, with a character like Farzan seemingly being made for Wanderer and a character like Cloud Retainer kind of being made for Gaming, but we all know it was really for Xiao. He is just wildly underappreciated with most people just not really liking his playstyle, therefore not very really giving him
him a chance. And while like Noel, I don't think his position on tier lists have changed wildly like some of the other characters on this list, it is it would be ridiculous to not mention Xiao with just how many little improvements he's gotten over time. He is easily the most commonly improved character. I mean, like every, I feel like twice a version, we get multiple artifact sets that could be good for Xiao, you know, might not be better than what he had before, but he keeps finding ways to get alternatives and improvements. Not to mention with the addition of Cloud Retainer being a strong animo healer that directly buffs his playstyle, and a character like Farina that not only benefits from his self-damaging, but also buffs his damage percent massively, he is finally able to escape the dreaded circle impact that so many players, myself included, absolutely have grown to hate. It's a little unclear where he's gonna land on tier lists nowadays, cause Cloud Retainer is still fairly new, but it's, it's hard to deny that he has gotten a lot better. Okay, moving on to one that's a little bit more near and dear to people's hearts, and this is a pretty good time to mention that these first four, they're not really ordered in any particular order. I don't really think that, you know, this one is necessarily more improved than the previous ones. Uh, the, the first one on the list, I absolutely believe is the most improved unit, but we'll get to that soon. This one is Kaching. Wildly loved by much of the Genshin community and once considered to be top tier in Genshin's early days, Kaching has seen a very interesting trajectory in the meta. Now in the early days, units like Kaching, Diluc, and Klee saw favoritism materialist due to just lack of competition in five star DPS. Once we started seeing units like Ganyu and Hu Tao, they really started to plummet. Eventually, we saw units like Kaching being viewed very unfavorably in tier list, most people forgetting she existed, and the sad part is, her constellations weren't really strong enough to save her when you've played for a very long time and just amassed them by losing 50-50s or getting her on the standard banner. It took one very specific and drastic change of the Genshin meta to see Kaching see relevance again. And many of us probably know what that change is. It was something that caused a massive change in the Genshin meta, so much so that there, there are likely many out there who wished it never happened in the first place. That being Dendro. You see, the thing about Kaching is she has a playstyle that weaves in a lot of attacks, charge attacks, skills, and elemental burst that hits a lot of times. And when you're scaling a bunch of an attack and crit rate and you're applying a ton of Electro, well, that's not really cohesive to an Electro Charge playstyle. Not that Electro Charge was ever really a strong elemental reaction in the meta anyway. It's always had its teams that performed relatively well, but Kaching rarely made her way into those. Then many years later comes Dendro with the Catalyze reaction, also known as Aggravate and Spread, and this rewards exactly what Kaching does pretty damn well. And despite the fact that you really don't hear much about it anymore because we have units like Sino and most people prefer to run spread with Alhatham or just, you know, generally any Hyper Bloom teams, that by no means takes away from how viable Kaching is now, thanks to the Dendro element. The main weakness of the teams that mostly surfaced when she came out was that just like, they were, a lot of them were actually completely healerless. Thankfully, now we actually have Dendro healers in Yao Yao and Baiju, so she can build a more sustainable team while being a strong aggravate or Hyper Bloom driver. However, Kaching was not the only character to benefit from Dendro. There was another Electro character that went from pretty much the bottom of almost any tier list to among the top, and that's pretty impressive for a four star. Of course, we are talking about Kuki. For a long time, it was actually pretty contentious to say that Kuki was a bad character. She had a lot of fans. People loved her personality, her design. After all, she had a lot of style in her kit, but her viability was a, in a really sad state. Kuki did have Electro, and she can actually apply Electro fairly well, but before Dendro existed, that just didn't really have that much value. You could try to use her in Electro Charge team, but as I mentioned earlier, Electro Charge was never really that great to begin with. Now, I'm not saying there was never a good Electro Charge team, but Kuki rarely made her way into such teams. And even then, those teams were not really performing to the standard of other top tier teams. But Kuki, oh man, <laughs> Dendro couldn't have been a bigger blessing for her. The center of Kuki's kit is her little Electro ring that heals you. And what does Hyper Bloom want? An Electro? AoE that is constant and preferably around your character or around the enemies you're attacking. Oftentimes for most teams Kuki is in, these are one and the same thing. So for her to be one of the best Hyper Bloom enablers while also healing makes her an incredibly valued teammate in many teams. Not to mention the fact that her constellations are barely even required, Kuki is just an amazing unit. And being so closely tied to Hyper Bloom means that characters like Nahida, when they came out, they made Kuki even better than she already was because Nahida is just overall improving the Hyper Bloom. 
Bloom reaction, which even received more support through something like the Paradise Lost Artifact set. These days, Hyper Bloom is considered one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful reaction just general teams in the entire game, with a lot of people just viewing it as an easy mode. When you have a character like Kuki that is capable of healing, scaling off of elemental mastery that is boosting the damage of these Hyper Blooms, it's a little bit hard to, to contest with that one. She honestly went from a probably bottom 10 or close to bottom 10 character to maybe even top 10. She is certainly one of the best four stars in the entire game now, thanks to this. And the beauty of it is that they didn't have to change Kuki's kit. The game just had to change, so we actually value what she does. And I really hope that one day I can make an updated version of this list where we include a character like Dia. And with that, my list is done. Now remember, this is my opinion. You know, you may think someone else improved more, maybe like Razor, maybe even Deluke with a new addition like Cloud Retainer. There are a lot of characters that improved quite a bit. But in any case, thank you to you for watching. Thank you to my members, my patrons for supporting me as always. And I'll see you in the next one. Attaboy! Ah.